Hi everyone and welcome to episode 62 of Like, Share, Follow and this week I have Lenny Cooper who is a USC grad and who's now in the sort of research development phase of running his own business. So welcome Lenny, how are you? I'm good, thank you very much for having me today. I was glad that you sent me a message and got me on the show. Yeah, no, thanks, thanks. Um, I remember you in our social media classes. It was really you were always really um, engaged and contributed a lot. And so that was when was that? That you you graduated um, earlier this year? Is that correct? Yeah, I had my graduation ceremony earlier this year, um, but the end of my degree was at the end of twenty twenty. I think yeah. I saw you in twenty nineteen last. It was my second year. Yeah, and and what degree did you do? So I did a bachelor of Biz bachelor of business majoring in marketing. Yeah. Excellent. Originally I, I was sorry, originally I was going to do a minor in social media, which is why I was in your classes. I think I got through two of them, but ended up switching up because I found there was an entrepreneurship cl uh, class with Raytha. Yep. So I thought I'd try and mix the two together and get a bit of a an understanding in both worlds. Yeah, no I, I think that's a really good combination. And um, and so you, because you gave um, the uh, the uh, speech at your graduation ceremony, didn't you? I did. Um, I was lucky enough to get the opportunity to present the graduate address for all of the people that I graduated with, and that was a really good experience. Um, it's a bit of a daunting experience because I got told about a week out that <laughs> um, I had to come up with a, a speech and present it. And at that time, I was going through a bit of um, you know, mental health problems at the time, and you know it was it was good to I guess sum everything up that I learned at university, and I was I guess told to give everyone that was graduating with me you know a bit of a message to leave with and some encouragement to go on and do the best that they can do in their careers. So. Um, yeah, I just did the best that I could in that time that I had. And I ended up finishing the speech 12 o'clock the night before. And then I only got to read through it a couple of times before I gave it, but it was good. Yeah, well, it, and it sounds like it would have been probably more genuine and heartfelt because I think sometimes when you practice a speech a lot, it becomes a little bit ro robotic. So it sounds like it, yeah, it would have, would have been much more authentic that way. Yeah. And I saw, like, what, what, why I got you on the show is because I saw a recent post you, you did on LinkedIn um, just about the importance of, of self-care and how after graduation you took some time out um, to recuperate. So do you want to talk a little bit about, about that? Yeah, sure. So during the last year of university, I was working full-time as well as studying full-time. And the company I was working for was a furniture removal company here on the Sunshine Coast. And I was actually uh, promoted to the area manager. So I was running a heap of different teams as well as you know trying to focus on my study uh, at university. And it was good having you know the extra responsibility and the extra money coming in and that sort of thing. But I didn't realize that between my work and study, I wasn't making any time for myself anymore. And after a while that started chipping away and chipping away and I just, wasn't happy with anything that I was doing and it just became really hard to keep putting the effort in when there's too many stresses versus the reward that I was getting. So after I graduated, I was actually working about 12 hours a day, uh, six days a week and I ended up with job burnout. Oh, so yeah. at the start of February, I actually decided to leave my job, like you said, and just focus on self-care for a while. Um, I learned that it was just important sometimes to rest, reset, regroup, um, just get all my thoughts together and just get more of a clear view of where I wanted to take my life and my future. Um, so since then, I've actually been working on upskilling myself a little bit by getting my excavator licensing and uh, a few other heavy machinery tickets just so I can start my own business in the earth moving industry. So now that I've had a bit of time off, I've been able to, I guess, think about where I want to go with everything and that's where I want to start taking everything. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, and it's so important because I think sometimes um, we get caught up in this whole sort of hustle culture. Like I I, I, I do it too. I, I work a lot. and um, But I always make time to, for things that I need. So, I, you know, I need 
I need some rest. I need, I need for me, I need to do yoga and I need to meditate. I need to go to the gym and exercise. And that's what I, where I get my energy from. And I need to make time for that. And it sounds like you were just so exhausted. Yeah, well, that's exactly right. I, just, I actually learned to meditate and, you know, go and exercise, go for a walk, just take time out from my day to do something a little bit different and do something for myself because for a long time there I wasn't doing that and that's what really yeah. took it out of me and just yeah after a while you just can't keep doing that <laughs> no and, and juggling work and, and study is really tough like at, it's funny at the moment I'm doing this series on TikTok giving tips about how to do it because um you know because I, I did it for such a long time as well and um yeah it's just it's it's tough like it's tough to try and have your, your feet in two different camps and try and really succeed at both of them at the same time it's um yeah it's it's a really tough juggle and that's the thing you can you can succeed in both of them but at the same time it becomes hard to succeed in your home life as well that's that was the main thing for me is i did really well in both my work and my study but anything at home you know with both me or my partner it that side suffered so yeah. I was giving too much of myself to the other people, you know, people that I was either working for or, you know, going to try and get the best grades that I could get. So I ended up coming out of university with a 6.67 GPA or something like that, as well as working full time. But well I was just unhappy. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> exhausted. Like there was yeah. nothing left. Yeah. Well, you know, and it's great that you've recognized that and even spoke about it because a lot of people just just don't they pretend that everything's fine so i you know i really admire you for doing that and just you know showing others that it's an it's a, it's important like it's important to take care of yourself because then you can do so much more yeah exactly right yeah now that i've taken the time to actually care for myself and you know had this time off it's been a while but it's been really good it's been you know an investment into my future that's how i see it yeah, and um, and so tell me, what's some of the best career advice that you've been given? Uh, so I've pro probably two different things. So from the people that I've worked for, or you know, people that I've studied under, the best things that I've learned are to question everything. Number one, and to never burn a bridge is number two. So I've always learned that there's two different types of people in the world. There's people that follow, and then there's the people that lead. So the people that follow, they're the ones that just go and do something because they're told to do something and they don't really question why. And then the people that lead, they're the ones that actually do question why they're doing something and they think of a better way to achieve the end result. So they're the ones that end up starting their own business. They're the ones that end up, you know, going far in life and they're the ones that actually are happy within themselves because they're achieving. And then at the same time, never burn a bridge. You know, if you are going to think of a better way to do something, you know, be humble about it. Tell the person that you might be working for that I think there's a better way. Um, you know, if you do end up leaving the company and starting your own, stay in contact with them. Don't ever burn that bridge because you never know when they might hold the next key to your, uh, future, future success. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so true. No, it's really true. That's great advice. And um, and so what? Because now that you're you're you, we were talking before that you're you're starting to actually do really thorough research into your business. So what do you think um, will help you stand out in the marketplace um, after all of this research? Um, well, I guess that's what I'm trying to find out. Um, yeah. <laughs> honestly, I think anyone can offer a service. Um, anyone can offer, you know all the same sorts of things within a business or, you know, service marketplace. But I think the best thing that I'll be able to offer is myself, uh, my personality. And I guess, you know, that's the number one thing that no one else can offer is me. So I think just being genuine uh, with my marketing and trying to include myself and all of my staff in anything that we put out there is going to be the, the best thing that we can offer. Yeah. Okay. That, that's great. And what? Let's reflect now on your time at university. And um, what were some of the most important things that you learned while you were there that that will help you in the building of this business? Uh, I think public speaking was probably the biggest one. Um, like I said, I only had about a week to prepare for 
uh, the graduate address that I gave and even just uh, giving, you know, oral presentations and working in a team, you know, to present anything at university. It was a bit daunting to start off with, but I've been able to take those skills and actually apply that to real life, you know, going and speaking to different business owners and speaking with um, different professionals out in the real world, actually understanding that everyone's the same, no one's better than anyone else, you know, because someone's got a job title that's higher than yours or because they might earn a bit more money than yours. Being able to speak confidently to those different industry professionals is probably the best skill that I was able to take away from university. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, communication skills, they, they will set you apart in any industry. So both um, speaking skills and, um, and written, um, it's so important. So important. And I remember um, a presentation that you gave on, I think it was, a, I was on social media analytics and that was really well done. I, I think oh, you thank you. that on um, LinkedIn, I think. I remember seeing the video of that. It was, it was excellent. I did. That was, um, I, th- oh, I, can't remember. I think that was my first year or second year, but I was actually working for a company called Student Wow Deals at the time and I was doing their marketing and I'd been doing the social media analytics I think it might have been second year because I was in your social media class and we were learning about it at the time. Um, and yeah, I ended up getting asked by, gosh, I can't remember which class it was in now, but um, I got asked by one of the lecturers to give that presentation because she wasn't too aware of um, the social media analytics side of things. Yeah. And because I was doing it for work, I was able to yeah, give a bit of an insight as to what we did, not so much as to... You know, everything you can do as a whole, but what we were doing at the time. Yep. No, it was excellent. And so now let's look at like on the flip side, what's something that you wish you'd learned at university that you, you've needed or you think you're going to need um, in the building of your business uh, that you're going to probably going to have to skill up on now? Uh, I think something I had to learn on my own and I didn't learn at university was definitely that ability to take the time off and work on myself. Um, You know, when I'm starting my own business, I'm that type of person that's going to want to put everything into it. And I need to be able to take that step back and realize that it's not all about working and it's not always about study. Um, You know, I do need to still take the time to do those little things that I enjoy and don't let everything get away from me again. Um, You know, don't let getting the job done or finishing that assignment or, you know, whatever it may be, get in the way of my own happiness again. <laughs> yeah, um, oh, absolutely. Yeah, because it took, you know, burning out from all the stress and, you know, not enough reward just to realize that taking time off for self-care is the best investment that I can have in my own future. So, yeah, yeah I think that's the biggest takeaway that I didn't really get, I guess, taught in university because it's yeah. one of those things you've got to learn on your own and where your limits are. Yeah, no, that, that's great advice. Um, so moving on now, so you're, are you still interested in social media? And and I guess you will use it for your when you're um, running your business. Um, of course. Yeah. So if you're still an enthusiast, um, what's something that you have discovered in the last couple of weeks in that's social media related that you could share with us? I think... One of the most interesting things that I've, you know, I've, I've sort of known about it, but I saw it come up, I think, on Ben Amos's feed on LinkedIn. He's he great. Was, he is good. I was, he was talking about, um, I guess, building up your brand equity and how today, like in today's, you know, internet, interconnected online world, um, people want to get to know the people behind the business, not so much what the business does because we're so interconnected and we, we want to get to know people, um, the best way to actually build a brand equity isn't to say, we can do this service for you uh, in this way. It's to say, this is the person that'll be doing it for you. This is why they're the best person for the job and this is why you should come use us. Yeah. So actually advertising the people, who you yeah. are and what you can offer as a, a different person in the industry is one of the most interesting things that I've learned offer in marketing communication yeah it's great advice because i mean essentially it's all about building trust 
So you build trust with people more than businesses because you you know you build trust with the people who are going to deliver that, that um, product or service. That's right. Well, that's why you go back to a business, even if it's like a food shop or anything like that. You go back because of the service that you get from the people that work there. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think and with Ben too, the way that he uses video to do that to build that that um that trust is is great. So he's yeah he's he's good. We we actually still get Ben to come and um, do some Q and A with um, the social media students when um, when we get to that part of the one of our courses where we're, they're, they're producing video for their clients. So that's good. I remember he, I was in that class. I remember when he came and did that little um, uh, tutorial for us. Yeah, he's he's got a wealth of information. He's great. Um, and so another thing I wanted to ask you what. So apart from the self-care, which is so important, so important, but on top of that, what advice would you give to emerging professionals who are still studying and those who are just graduated um, about how to succeed in their careers? I think the best advice that I could give to anyone that's you know coming up or at any point in their career is to just be confident within yourself. Um, people like to see confidence. So even if you're going for that new job or just networking with new people, it doesn't matter who they are. If you give your honest opinion and you're you know, in an open conversation with them, they're gonna listen to you. It doesn't matter how much money they earn, doesn't matter how many years experience they have on top of you. People wanna connect with other people. They don't wanna connect with robots. So just be honest, talk to them and they'll listen to you. They'll find the time of day. Absolutely. And look, with me, I was very, you wouldn't believe it, but <laughs> I was very shy um, when I finished university and um, and I would just pretend that I was confident. And after a while, I became confident, but I had to, I would just, before I went into these sort of situations, I would just pretend I was someone who was confident. So that sort of fake it till you make it thing. And it actually works. Like, you know, just, just pretending it eventually becomes second nature and then you are. Well, that's right. It's just getting that experience. You know, like anything, you've got to practice to make perfect. So it's the same with speaking. It's the same with just communicating with people. The more you do it, the more second nature it becomes. Totally. And um, the most important question of the show is, who do you like, share and follow? Well, I mean, other than people like Ben Amos, I think it's just anyone that I've met or networked with in the past. Uh, like I said earlier, I don't like to ever burn a bridge. So like you've connected with me and got me to come onto your show, I like to keep in contact with any old connections that I've had. Just try and be involved with what they're doing because you never know when it might come in handy to have that connection. That's great advice. Like, And it's so true. And and particularly even when you're at, when you are studying, make sure that you, you connect with the people that you're studying with because you don't know where they're going to end up um, and you don't know how um, in the future you, you you might actually need their assistance or you can assist them. So, That's right. Yeah. Excellent. And so we've had some comments from Anthony Roberto. So he said, good afternoon to you. And um, well done for being selected on your, giving the graduation speech. Thank and you. he's he's pleased that you made the time to focus on self care and bring balance. And he said thank you for sharing your personal and career insights and keep up the good work and continued success in your professional and personal endeavours. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thanks, Anthony. And so, uh, do you have any final words? Because we're sort of at the end of the um, the show now. Do you have any final words that you'd like to leave with the people watching? Um, I think the best thing I can leave people with is just be confident with everything that you do. Uh, you know, you're your own person. No one else is you. Just give what you can offer to the world, and that's the best anyone else can ask. Excellent. It's And it's so true. So thank you so much, Lenny. And I wish you every success with your business. And yeah, well done on focusing so much on the research because that is the key to success. So well done. And um, it was great chatting to you. And um, for the next week, I'm still locking in a guest. So um, I will hopefully be able to promote that on Friday. Um, but otherwise, I'll see everyone next week. And thank you so much again, Lenny. You're welcome. Thank you very much for having me.
Thank you.